Welcome back. In more local matters, a sweeping zoning change underway in Madison has stirred up some boiling tension citywide in what could be framed as a debate over affordable housing and where and how that housing should happen. Even in a city like Madison, where council meetings tend to run long into the night, the hundreds register registering both for and against the zoning change this past week, it was still unusual. In short, a proposal clearing the council on Tuesday allows property owners who live within a quarter mile of major transit routes to build duplexes in areas zoned for single family homes. Before we get into it, allow me to introduce two city elders whose positions do differ a bit on this change. Council President Keith Furman and Elder Bill Tischler. Bill, I want to start with you because you represent an area where I know a lot of the constituents were some of those registering before or against. That's because it's a historical district area. So walk, just give me a recap of where your position was, where your vote was, and why so many people are concerned in your area. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I represent the uh, University Hill Farms uh, neighborhood. And I think what, in many cases, uh, people were, were on board with, with the bus rapid transit. I think that they, they saw a need for, for having, uh, you know, a kind of a, a faster way to get, to get around town. Uh, I think many of them also understood the need for, for changes in, in, ho in housing. But, um, but all along the process, what, what they were hearing, what they were learning, um, is that the historic district where they live would not be included. So I think they were uh, a little surprised to suddenly find that uh, after, after months and months of discussions about uh, the historic districts not being included, to suddenly uh, find that, that uh, there was suddenly a change and they would, would be included. So, Elder Furman, you've kind of been on the other side of this. You've been pretty supportive of this all along. Uh, and your position, correct me if I'm wrong, would be that historical districts are okay to include here as as past the, the council. Walk me through a bit where your position lands. Sure. Um, so I, I think we need to recognize we're in a housing crisis in Madison. Um, housing prices uh, and rental prices are, are unaffordable for many, many residents. And I think we need to be aggressive and smart as a city trying to figure out how we incentivize um, and encourage um, different forms of density. City. Um, so this transit-oriented development does just that. It's saying that anywhere there's a rapid um, bus line, so bus service within 15 minutes, which is our, our upcoming bus rapid transit and some of our new lines that are coming up as part of the network redesign, we should be encouraging more density. And so with this particular Hill Farms um, example, what we're doing in this that, that situation is encouraging um, or, or allowing, as of right, people the ability to build duplexes without complicated approvals. I don't believe it's going to radically change um, the character of the neighborhood. Um, Alder Tischler talks about this neighborhood being designed in the 50s, we are also doing redlining back then, and I, there are experts that have said um, single-family housing is an extension of redlining. Um, we, we desperately need more housing, and we need to be creative about that. I mean, I think this touches on a sore spot for anyone who owns a single-family home or even lives in a duplex, but also I think we have to talk about the renters in this equation, right? You, you have people who typically live in perhaps a 20 or 30 or 40 unit building, and then you have people who like the single family home model. How do we cut through all of this? Because as you mentioned, I think you, you would both agree, we need affordable housing. You know, we are, you know, we, he's talking about we have a housing crisis. You know, and when you use words like crisis, that, that you know, means we have immediate response. We need to solve this crisis. Um, but I don't think by adding the historic districts is going to solve that crisis. Um, I think what we should be looking at, it, really what we have here in Madison is a housing shortage. Um, and so, if, but if we are going to keep using the word crisis, then we need to look at where we can build housing right away and, and, and high density. And there are a lot of areas, uh, you know, areas, uh, you know, uh, where we have parking lots that sit empty most, most of the time. These are areas where we could be building the, the housing, uh, you know. Um, you know, and build, I guess what I'm looking at is, is having an opportunity to, to immediately go in, start working with, with the private sector to, to build up, build more structures. Um, and if you just, you know, someone, if people you took, you know, take time, take a bus to District 11, you'll see all of the construction that's going on right now. We're adding uh, over 2,000 apartments, I think 2,500 apartments right now, and there's more that can be built. You know, so if, if every uh, if every district could be adding that type of, of density, along with keeping the the neighborhoods the way they, they are, um, I think we will start to see getting closer and closer to solving the, the housing shortage that we have in Madison. 
I sense you would like to respond to that. Yeah, I mean, I sort of struggle with that response. I mean, there's definitely not one answer for us to solve our housing crisis. Right. Um, I am grateful for all the different developments that are taking place, right. and I'm grateful for the different options. I still, right. I mean, and, and I, you know, obviously, I think the council agreed to not hear an argument for leaving alone um, single-family housing in that area and right. not, not adding duplexes, and that's where I struggle. Right. I don't disagree with you. I do. I don't think we're going to tomorrow have a ton of duplexes built in the, in, in the Hill Farms right. neighborhood, for example. But I do think right. encouraging that and allowing that is important. Furman, I, I, you, you mentioned in a conversation before this that you, you, there's things that aren't being discussed about this proposal. Things like let's let's talk about noise concerns. Let's talk about people who have fears about you know stuff encroaching into their backyards. What you know, there's also been you know some overlap of sm uh, the ADU units, smaller units um, in people's backyards. There's also that kind of concern is kind of laced into all of this. Talk through some other lesser known impacts of this proposal that perhaps you know are touch points that the community should be aware of. Um, sure, the, the advantages or the impacts? I mean, are, so you're looking for some of the, what, what more density might mean for communities? Is, yes. Yeah, and so I, you know, I think that's unfortunately some, sometimes what gets lost in these discussions is you have a lot of people that come out and say, I don't want my neighborhood to change. I'm used to my neighborhood being the way it is. Um, and instead, we don't actually have a more, a more of a robust discussion on, okay, what are your concerns? And sometimes what we hear, we've heard, and we heard in some of the debate on uh, Tuesday night is, is c concerns about noise. And so, you know, there are concerns throughout the city uh, and as you have more dense areas, uh, sure, there are definitely more noise complaints. I think as a city, we need to be looking at how we handle that. Um, you know, right now, our police department responds to noise complaints, and anybody who's ever dealt with stuff like that knows it's certainly not their their top priority when they're when they're responding to issues, and that's understood. There are more important things, but but I understand the quality of life concerns there, and so I think you know, as alders, we should be talking about what we do about n uh, noise abatement um, in a better way, and see what other systems are in place that could, we can do a better job there. One of the other discussions we also had um, on, on Tuesday night with one of the uh, amendments um, Alder Tischler talked about is having to do with owner occupancy. And um, there is concern about um, upkeep of units. And so certainly nobody wants to rent a, an apartment um, that is not well maintained. And there are certainly instances in Madison where apartments aren't being maintained to a level that everybody would like them to be maintained. So I think looking at that and trying to understand how we can handle that better is much, a much better use of resources than focusing on, you know, let's not change that neighborhood at all. We need people to be able to uh, be able to, to walk and to get to uh, the bus stops, um, you know, and so coming up with, I think, where also people have concerns about is, is where the uh, quarter mile from the bus routes, uh, uh, you know, are, are going to be for, for the overlay zone. And, uh, you know, one of the things I, I talked about on Tuesday was, was looking at rather at the bus routes, looking at the bus stops, because that's, you know, we want to have, you know, we want to have the density. We want to have people to be able to get to the, the stops and not just be able to look out their window and see the, see the bus go by. Um, so, the other things that you're, you know, raising too is, is you know, if this, you know, uh, if we can prove to uh, to Madison residents that we can build a, a safe and reliable uh, bus route that's running every 15 minutes, how are we going to be expanding this? And as we expand the bus routes, that we also be expanding the zoning, you know. And so as we move, you know, right now we're looking, we're focusing on having uh, the discussion is, is really on getting through through the downtown. That's that's how our cities are designed. So. So as we move out, does the zoning go along with it? And then if, if we're not successful and we aren't able to run buses every 15 minutes, if we're not getting the, the, the ridership that we need, does the zoning go away? I need to wrap up this discussion, but what I'd like to do is I, I want, because what I'm hearing, there, there's two very distinct ideas here of how we move forward as a city, at where we address whether you want to call it a housing shortage or a housing crisis. I'm, I want to give each of you 30 seconds to kind of finalize where do we go forward from here, right? So this thing has passed. What's the next step? What's the vision next? How, how do we how do we bring these sides together? Uh, I'll start with you, and then again, try to keep yourselves to roughly 30 seconds. Sure. Um, I think we just we need to continue as a community to look for places where we could add additional density. Um, the the transit oriented development is 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 such a easy place because we already know that pieces are uh, in place to make transportation better in those areas. So, you know, we, we want more ridership, et cetera. So I think from here we go for looking looking at other opportunities to um, improve our zoning, to encourage um, more housing, to address the, the crisis and the shortage of housing in Madison. Yeah. No, and I, I agree, but I think we also need to take, you know, kind of pause, maybe slow down a little bit. We're throwing a lot at, at Madison residents right now. And I think we need to be 
you know, we have the bus, we have the bus rapid transit in place. We need to put that forward, prove that. But then, we, where we should be looking at doing the, the, the infill and the density is again looking at building up, um, and we we can build those uh, those uh, places to live right there on, on the bus routes, then we can come back and address the, the areas, uh, you know, years from now um, on looking at our neighborhoods. Alder Tischler, Alder Furman, I thank you for having, I, you know, I know it's a tough conversation. I thank you both for staying respectful. I think it's a good opportunity to present both, you know, both the sides, both the issues to our viewers. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. And just ahead, major changes to the state constitution that's coming next.